Let's talk about the uh, the big star, though, in the country today. It ain't Michael Goodwin. It's uh, Matthew McConaughey, of course, the great actor. Now, I don't think most people realize this, but Matthew McConaughey, actually a native Uvalde resident. Matthew McConaughey was actually born in Uvalde, Texas. And I knew he was a Texas guy, obviously. The rumors even last year, he may run for governor in the state of Texas. Me and Bernie talked about that. And um, I would have been fine with that. And after watching him speak yesterday, he may be the best choice. But I had no idea he actually was born in Uvalde, Texas. So certainly the shooting near and dear to Matthew McConaughey, which I guess explains why he would be at the White House talking about gun control as he did yesterday. And again, everybody on both sides commending uh, Matthew McConaughey on his performance yesterday. He really was great. Here's, uh, here's a bunch of cuts. If you did miss it, I got you. Don't worry. As Bernie will often say, we watch it so you don't have to. Matthew McConaughey, gun control, talking about uh, it's a little different this time with Uvalde. Here he is, Oscar Award winner Matthew McConaughey. How can a loss of these lives matter? So while we honor and acknowledge the victims, we, we need to recognize that this time it seems that something is different. There is a sense that perhaps there's a viable path forward. Responsible parties in this debate seem to at least be committed to sitting down and having a real conversation about a new and improved path forward. Uh, Camille and I came here to share my stories from my hometown of Uvalde. Came here to take meetings with elected officials on both sides of the aisle. We came here to speak to them, to speak with them, and to urge them to speak with each other. To remind and inspire them that the American people will continue to drive forward the mission of keeping our children safe. Because it's more than our right to do so. It's our responsibility to do so. His uh, wife is beautiful, and they, they actually brought with them the green sneakers of uh, one of the little girls, I guess, Camille, who was killed in Uvalde uh, last week, which made it very, very emotional on top of everything Matthew McConaughey said. Here he talks about gun owners, the Second Amendment, and not having to give up their rights as, once again, we pursue both sides some needed change. We heard from so many people, right? Families of the deceased, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, Texas Rangers, hunters, Border Patrol, and responsible gun owners who won't give up their Second Amendment right to bear arms. And you know what they all said? We want secure and safe schools, and we want gun laws that won't make it so easy for the bad guys to get these damn guns. We need to invest in mental health care. We need safer schools. We need to restrain sensationalized media coverage. We need to restore our family values. We need to restore our American values. And we need responsible gun ownership. Responsible gun ownership. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 rifle to 21. We need a waiting period for those rifles. We need red flag laws and consequences for those who abuse them. Now he went on to talk more about the Second Amendment and responsible gun owners, uh, gun owners, I should say, and how this is not a partisan issue. This is Matthew McConaughey, number three. Responsible gun owners are fed up with the Second Amendment being abused and hijacked by some deranged individuals. These regulations are not a step back. They're a step forward for a civil society and, and the Second Amendment. Look, this should be a nonpartisan issue. This should not be a partisan issue. There is not a Democratic or Republican value in one single act of these shooters. It's not. But people in power have failed to act. So we're asking you, and I'm asking you, will you please ask yourselves, can both sides rise above? Can both sides see beyond the political problem at hand and admit that we have a life preservation problem on our hands? See, that was interesting. He actually was able to make both sides happy there. He talked about the importance of the Second Amendment. He talked about people not stepping on uh, the Second Amendment. That, of course, makes the right happy. But then he talked about how, listen, there has to be some control here. There has to be some control so we can stop what we've seen at schools like Columbine, Columbine, I should say, and Uvalde, which he says here in cut number four. 
We've got to take a sober, humble, and honest look in the mirror and rebrand re ourselves based on what we truly value. What we truly value. We've got to get some real courage and honor our immortal obligations instead of our party affiliations. Enough with the counterpunching. Enough with the invalidation of the other side. Let's come to the common table that represents the American people. Find a middle, middle ground. The place where most of us Americans live anyway especially on this issue. Because I promise you, uh, America, you and me, we are not as divided as we are being told we are. We start by making laws that save innocent lives and don't infringe on our Second Amendment rights. We start right now by voting to pass policies that can keep us from having as many Columbines, Sandy Hooks, Parklands, Las Vegas, Buffaloes, and Uvaldes from here on. See, he keeps talking about infringing on our Second Amendment rights. So he's not one of those crazy lefty actors who wants to take your guns away. He's not that at all. In fact, he's the complete opposite. What he wants is, yes, Second Amendment is great. Love it. He probably has guns himself. But we do need some gun control laws that will prevent the next Columbine, the next Uvalde, uh, as he as he said there, and, and how do you make sure that the victims didn't die for no reason? I'll tell you what, it's not about putting their pictures up, these little kids, God rest their souls, in the New York Post. I found that to be perverse. It's not about CNN for nine consecutive days putting up pictures of dead little kids. It's not about CNN talking to teachers nine days later who played dead and talked about the smell and the sound of dead kids everywhere. That's not paying respect. That's not paying respect. That is that is newspapers and TVs looking to sensationalize a horrific event and keep you folks interested and reading and watching, and I find it to be gross. I've always said that. It's enough already. I don't want to see the planes hit the buildings. I don't want to see dead kids in my newspaper. How do you make sure these kids didn't die for no reason? This is Matthew McConaughey, 5. My uh, uh, wife and I, uh, my wife and I, Camilla, we spent most of last week on the ground with the families in Uvalde. Texas. We shared stories, tears, and memories. The uh, the common thread, independent of the anger and the confusion and the sadness, it, it was the same. How can these families continue to honor these deaths by keeping the dreams of these children and teachers alive? Again, how can the loss of these lives matter? And let's admit it. We can't truly be leaders if we're only living for re-election. Let's be knowledgeable and wise and act on what we truly believe. Again, we got to look in the mirror, lead with humility, and acknowledge the values that are inherent to, but also above, politics. We got to make choices, make stands, embrace new ideas, and preserve the traditions that can create true, true progress for the next generation with real leadership. Let's start giving us, all of us, with real leadership, let's start giving all of us good reason to believe that the American dream is not an illusion. So there's Matthew McConaughey coming from a place, I think, obviously, of love, right? He didn't pick on Republicans. He didn't pick on Democrats. He didn't yell and scream. He said, hey, folks, it's time to change some things and stop little kids and others from dying in this country. How many times have other celebrities gotten involved in these conversations, whether it's a Rob Reiner meathead, whether it's, uh, you know, Alyssa Milano, whether it's Robert De Niro. I want to punch him across the face. He said about Donald Trump, whether it's Barbara Streisand. We can go on and on. All these uh, Meryl Streep, another hateful actress. We can go on and on about all these very talented people. People, by the way, tremendously talented people who, when given the opportunity because of their fame to step up and say something important, all they do is hate. And for the most part, hate on the right, hate Republicans. Matthew McConaughey, none of that yesterday. Now, <laughs> because I liked it, Sid Rosenberg doesn't mean that everybody liked it. Lou Rafino, I'll ask you, uh, you got to be one of those guys who, when celebrities speak nine times out of ten, they turn you off, right? They're annoying. They're hateful. You don't want. You, have you said things in the past like I don't want to hear from these people? I, only when they're saying things that are just they're not making sense. Right. He makes perfect sense. He makes perfect sense. He, he always has, actually. So you liked what he had to oh, say? Oh, I loved it. So did I. Of course. And so did others, especially. On Fox News, one of our dear friends, every Sunday morning, does a fantastic show at this station. Judge Janine, this is cut number six. Here's what she had to say about Mahak McConaughey's speech at the White House yesterday. 
I think it was delivered brilliantly. What he did was he had both the intellectual as well as the emotional pieces combined. He did it in a way, and I questioned what he was doing in the White House briefing room. I really did. But then I realized he did it better than anyone from Congress or certainly the President of the United States could do. And he presented things to make everyone feel that they were vested in this. How about that? That is high praise from Judge Jeanine. Didn't stop there. Here's a politician, Tulsi Gabbard. Don't forget, a Democrat. And actually, I do stand corrected, John Katsimatidis. She is a common sense Democrat. She's one that actually does exist. Here's Tulsi Gabbard on McConaughey's speech. He's a sincere person. You know, he genuinely cares about our country, cares about the American people. And so I think this message was delivered in that in that spirit, and I hope it's received in that way as well. And he's I completely agree. We do have to come together as a country, and I think there is common ground that can be had uh, where I think we all want to make sure that criminals and those who shouldn't have their hands on guns don't, and that we do not in any way undermine our Second Amendment rights. The, the, those uh, law-abiding American citizens who own guns should not see their guns taken away. We do have others on this, including Greg Gutfeld, Dana Perino, and a host of others. 1-800-848-WABC, 1-800-848-9222. Again, Naomi Rosenberg, my mother, she is uh, all hopped up about something. I don't know. She'll be here at 8.05. Lydia Reports comes your way at 8.25. The great congressman making his Wednesday appearance, Peter King. He's coming up at 8.40. Jenea Butler live in studio, 9.25. And your chance at cash and prizes coming up with Pete Morgan's Peerless Boilers Beat Sid contest comes your way at 9.40. A stacked Wednesday show. Again, more McConaughey, more reaction to McConaughey, and more on last night's gubernatorial debate between Hochul, Williams, and Swazi. Right here on Bernie and Sid, Talk Radio 77, WABC.